。娘，你不要再说了。What role do women play in Chinese films? Well, this is difficult to answer because, for one thing, the positions are varied. As in entertainment in general, some depict an ideal or an archetype, some an expression of what a woman should be, whatever that means, and some fight against the stereotypes and boundaries set by the patriarchal power structures that exist historically in all areas of life. We see it everywhere, and we see it in China too. But a point people often bring up is the independence, strength, and autonomy of the female characters in Chinese movies, be they leading characters or otherwise. Is it simply that Chinese cinema features many more strong, independent, and free-thinking female characters than Western cinema, or is it that people notice these differences more due to the effects of the Orientalist gaze, meaning that we seek out difference in media that belongs to a culture that we're told is so different from our own, and perhaps? Most importantly, do these characters, if indeed genuine, portray an accurate projection of the experience of women in Chinese society? For the socialist revolution in particular, cultural productions like magazines, posters, movies, played a huge part in solidifying minds, expanding ideologies, and exporting slogans and plans across the diverse country. These same areas of production also became a key proponent in the fight for the equality of women. There was a recognition of women's need for liberation to the extent that Mao himself comments that women are the most oppressed by political, economic, and social systems. One of the productions that highlighted this change was *Women's China*, which first appeared in 1939 and revived in 1949 as *Women of New China*. It became a public forum for state feminists to express their vision of a new socialist China, as well as a major site for their discursive practice in the pursuit of women's liberation. During the Cultural Revolution, film was used in this way to highlight the importance of women in the struggle for ideological freedom and social equality. Female directors are well known as trailblazers in Chinese cinema, and not just for focusing on feminist issues, but also highly respected for their art. Zhang Nuanxin with films like *Sacrificed Youth* and *Good Morning Beijing*, Li Xiaohong with *Bloody Morning* and *Blush*, and Peng Xiaolian with *Shanghai Women* and *Women's Story*, to name just a few, were part of a movement that changed the course of Chinese cinema forever. Li Xiaohong, whose film *Bloody Morning* was banned for reasons unknown to her at the time, was a fifth-generation graduate of the Beijing Film Academy, along with Jiang Yimou and Chen Kaige. *Bloody Morning* deals with sexuality, purity, ownership, and the subjugation of women in rural settings, telling the story of a murder spurred on by the alleged loss of a young woman's virginity, which is seen by the murder as an issue of ownership. Don't let me go. 你怎么又出来了？出啥事儿了？你不知道啊？嗨，平光，你快回答吧！知道啥？你啰嗦个啥？人家都来了。The film criticizes the failures of the traditional patriarchal values, improperly dealing with the situation, which needn't have been a situation in the first place. A theme that writers Diana Mori Robin and Ira Jaff also recognize in this film is that. Lee discards the traditional cinematic male gaze and rejects any eroticism of the female characters, despite sexuality and sexualization being the central themes of the story. The effect being a stark contrast to films with similar themes, including Zhang Yimou's Red Sorghum. Then I'll ask you to help me with one thing. Hey, man, you're not going to kill me. Who is this guy? Modern Chinese films often portray the great strength that women have against systems that oppress them. I am not Madame Bovary, from director Feng Xiaogang, does this through the story of Liu Zhenyu's novel *I Did Not Kill My Husband*. I am not Madame Bovary tells the almost ridiculous story of Li Xuelian, who hatches a plan with her husband to feign a divorce in order to apply for an apartment and also to have a second child. After the divorce, her husband runs off with another woman. Lee fights a losing battle to try and annul their divorce, essentially becoming a married couple again, so she can divorce him again for real. 
Her case baffles the local authorities and eventually her campaign leads her to Beijing following the escalation of her query through each bureaucratic level in the Chinese system. Shows Li's struggle to be taken seriously. During her fight, she's accused of infidelity, arrested, sent to a re-education camp, coerced into a bogus relationship with another man by the authorities just to keep her quiet. And by the end of the film, Lee has no options left but to accept that this has all just been her fate and get on with it. While I have read the film critiqued as an affirmation that her plans to trick the local authorities were wrong, this is not what I read from the film. And instead, I felt that her acceptance of the status quo at the film's end is part of the film's underlying satire, highlighting to the audience that none of this was really fair and she fought long and hard and was silenced and abused by multiple levels of men in authority. Far from strengthening their position, I Am Not Madame Bovary challenges at what point the state should be in control of family planning and women's right to freedom of marriage, divorce and sexuality. I've also seen it written that the choice of the circular aspect ratio is used here to show how the narrowing of Lee's environment impacts the steps she takes, almost a way to highlight the constraints on the choices women have in a man's world. Whether this was the desired effect or not, I don't know, but I guess that's what art's all about. But the fact of the matter is that being a woman in China, like all over the world, is hard. Misrepresentation is just as prevalent as it ever was, and the need for encouraging women to be the strength of the revolution has disappeared. An interview from Vice Life talks about this shift with one of the female stars of the Cultural Revolution films and feminist scholar Wang Zhong. Socialist period angle was a symbol of women's double liberation from gender and class hierarchies. From my childhood on, all the films portrayed revolutionary heroines, all strong women. Historically, women in China couldn't receive formal education and you had no right to be in politics. Uh, it was the socialist revolution, especially the feminists in the social revolution, they fought very hard to uh, sweep away that kind of mentality. Um, but unfortunately, uh, in the 1980s, um, it, it's revived. Wang Zhang is talking about the revival of traditional marriage norms and expectations on women's place in society. But in lots of films, these expectations continue to be challenged. And film can be a powerful way to highlight what's wrong and challenge what society expects. To return to our earlier questions, I don't think it's that Chinese film features necessarily more strength and autonomy in female characters. But I do think that people notice this difference because the struggles are the same that are faced all over the world and perhaps seeing them in a new setting, we notice them more fervently. There are so many great films that celebrate powerful and strong female characters. And there are some films and directors that I would definitely recommend checking out. I had so much fun researching and learning about the history of feminism in China while writing this episode. And it truly is a fascinating story and one that I think should not be overlooked. <laughs> Chokong